41st lecture and this is a problem solving session problems on DSP structures chapter 6 of Mitra. The first problem <coughs> the first problem that I would solve is 629. I have carefully chosen the problems, problems which have a twist which are not routine. Routine problems can be solved in routine manner. 629 says develop a 2 multiplier realization 2 multiplier canonic realization of the second order transfer function h of z equal to 1 plus alpha plus beta divided by 1 plus alpha z inverse plus beta z to the minus 2. Normally it would require 3 okay alpha beta and 1 plus alpha plus beta but since alpha and beta occur in the numerator also there is a possibility that we may be able to extract these multipliers and have only 2 multipliers and 2 delays and the trick is that you write y of z in terms of capital X and capital Y but bringing the multipliers together okay. For example it is X of z plus alpha x sub z minus z inverse y of z. Do you see this? Okay. You see x sub z multiplied by alpha and y of z multiplied by alpha z inverse which I take to the right hand side so the negative sign plus beta x sub z minus z to the minus 2 y of z. Now, you must reduce the number of multipliers as much as possible even a negative mul negative change of sign it should it should not occur twice. There is a change of sign here minus y of z. So, what we do is what we do is we say here is x of z and here is y of z okay then we come backwards y of z is required to be multiplied by minus 1 because both terms are negative then have a z inverse and another z inverse. Therefore, you get minus z inverse y of z here and minus z to the minus 2 y of z here both are required and what you have to do is x sub z is to be <coughs> added to x sub z is to be added to well let us add is to be added to minus z inverse x sub z yes. I beg your pardon uh, ok let us do this minus z inverse x sub z multiplied by alpha ok. So, that is it one of the terms is obtained then we have to obtain the second term. So, another summation no oh I beg your pardon no 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 I will put a it will become a little complicated. So, what we do is x sub z summation ok all right we shall follow this. So after summation we have to multiply by alpha agreed. So, um, I have y of z here then minus 1 z inverse z inverse. So, this has to be added to x sub z agreed and then multiplied by alpha then this has to be added to x sub z ok x sub z is to be added to this. So, let us do this here x sub z then the third summation would be this plus ok z to the minus 2 minus z to the minus 2 y of z then also another x sub z. So, let us bring it from here wherever you like. 
then it is to be multiplied by beta and that is it. Agreed? So, the trick is you write the expression in such a manner that you do not require more than 2 multipliers. Then you construct them one by one. There is a way of drawing this diagram so that there are no criss crosses which you can try and find out. <coughs> Yeah. The next problem is also an interesting one. Done? Next problem is 636. It is given A plus Z inverse divided by Z 1 plus A Z inverse realized in the form in the form this realization is given summation minus 1 please draw with me z inverse then this is multiplied by a there is a single multiplier realization of an all pass function single multiplier but two delays. Okay, this goes here and the same signal another delay goes to a summer. Okay, this is given single multiplier two delays realization of an all pass function. The problem is to find a cascade realization of the third order transfer function B plus Z inverse divided by 1 plus B Z inverse then A plus Z inverse divided by 1 plus A Z inverse multiplied by 1 plus C Z inverse divided by C plus Z inverse. You have to develop a realization of this and by sharing delays, you see realization is no problem, you just draw three such blocks all right. The problem is to share delays between adjacent all pass sections such that and show that the total number of delays can be reduced to 4 instead of 6 it can be reduced to 4 and the trick is the following. I will simply draw the first and the second and show you what the trick is. Please draw with me. Z inverse this comes multiplied by A, then a Z inverse summation, the second block would be similar summation minus 1 Z inverse and then and then a multiplication by B, this goes here, then a Z inverse and a summation, that is it, this goes to the third block. There is something to be done at the junction, so as to reduce the number of delays. Okay? So, I will illustrate with this junction. Uh, this is the junction that we tackle. What we do is the following. It is a very clever way. You see, since there is a summation, we can interchange the two summers. That is, you bring this summer here and you take this summer here. If you do that, then you have two inputs to this summer and both of them come with a z inverse right and therefore z inverse can be made common between the two this is the trick 
you would be able to work out the rest? Okay, very good. And therefore, since two summers are being replaced by one, you get only four summers. Normally, it requires six. Six minus two is four. I am sorry, six delays. Six delays will be replaced by four. Okay, done? You want more? Uh, are you? No, I think you can do it. Okay? I can give you the, I have co completely worked it out. I can give you the final, final result, but uh, <coughs> I will give it if time permits at the end. It is simple now. Okay? Only thing is you will have to draw the circuit carefully, realization such that overlaps are minimized. Overlaps are not useful for uh, fabrication. In overlap, fabrication means a lot of uh, processing steps, extra processing steps. The next problem that I do is 644. 644. It has several parts A, B, C, D, E. Okay. It has several parts and the problem is realize each of the following I, I, R transfer functions <coughs> in gray Markle's form that is with taps from delays, tapped, de tapped, all, uh, tapped lattice structures, okay? gray Markle's form and check the BIBO stability of each transfer function. The problem is realize each of the following I, I, R transfer functions in gray Markle form and check the BIBO stability, gray Markle structure and the stability. A, H 1 of Z equals to 2 plus Z inverse plus 2 Z to the minus 2 divided by 1 minus 0 0.75 Z inverse plus 0 0.125 z to the minus 2. And by now, you should be quite efficient in obtaining lattice realizations of second order functions in particular. Second order functions should require minimal amount of calculation. K2 would be equal to 0 0.125, agreed? And K1 would be D1 that is minus 0 0.75 divided by 1 plus d2. So, 1 plus 0 0.125 and that comes as minus 2 third. 0 0.125 is 1 eighth and 0 0.75 is 3 quarter. Okay? You should do these fractions wherever possible. <coughs> and therefore, k1 magnitude is also less than 1 and therefore, the structure is stable. <coughs> then, what you have to do is get these two lattices K2 equal to 1 eighth then K1 is equal to minus 2 third <coughs> excuse me the end is connected together. Then you have to take taps from here, call it alpha 1, taps from here alpha 2 and tap from here alpha 3. I am not drawing the lattice. It could be single multiplier or two multiplier each. And then you add them together. Well, the rest is routine to find out what alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 are and the results are 2, 2.5 and 3.41667. These are my results. Please do verify. <coughs> Since second order is very simple, I will simply give you the results for B. B is also second order 1 plus 2 z inverse plus 3 z to the minus 2 divided by 1 minus z inverse plus 0.25 z to the minus 2. 
the results for this are K2 equal to 0.25, K1 equal to minus 0.8, alpha 1 equal to 3, alpha 2 equal to 5 and alpha 3 equal to 4.25. These are the answers. Nothing, uh, no twist in this problem, it is a straightforward problem. Then comes H3 Z C. C we have already done the class? Okay then I will not repeat this. D is 1 plus 1.6 z inverse plus 0.6 z to the minus 2. This is an interesting problem. 1 minus z inverse minus 0.25 z to the minus 2 plus 0.25 z to the minus 3. Now obviously K3 is equal to 0.25, agreed? K2 that is D2 prime K2, how do you find this? D2 minus D3 D1 divided by 1 minus D3 square, very good. And if you substitute this, this comes as 0, okay? Now you suspect that there is something wrong with the problem or maybe it is not BIBO stable because in IIR you cannot get a linear phase function. The denominator cannot be a linear phase polynomial, why not? Then the transfer function is automatically unstable. Is not that right? So, uh, and it, it does therefore K2 equal to 0, K1 if you find from here, K1 is minus 1. How do you find K1? D1 double prime is equal to D1 prime. You see if K2 equal to 0, obviously the next one is a first order transfer function. So it is D1 prime minus D3 prime, no, I am sorry, I am sorry. You have to find out D1 prime from here and that would be equal to K1, okay. So D1 prime, let me, let me indicate this, D1 prime is equal to D1 minus D3 D2. You cannot apply that second order formula. Do not be tempted to do that. You will be making a mistake. There are so many steps that you can make a mistake. You have to be alert. Okay. Divided by 1 minus d3 squared and this comes out as minus 1. You have to go up to this to be able to say that this is BIBO unstable. Okay. Therefore, unstable and no realization. <coughs> is called for. The next one E H 5 Z is equal to 3 plus 1.5 Z inverse plus Z to the minus 2 plus 0.5 Z to the minus 3 divided by 1 minus 1.833 3 z inverse plus 1.5 z to the minus 2 minus 0.5833 z to the minus 3 plus 0 0.0833 z to the minus 4. Do you suspect something with this transfer function? This occurrence of 833 in all the three, <coughs> in all the three coefficients, what does it indicate? That it is a practical situation where there is a recurrence, there is a recurring number which has been truncated. In other words, the designer has not taken care to keep it as a fraction, okay. Nevertheless, 
the results are K1 equal to 0 0.08333 K4 ok. Well <laughs> since he has given up to 0 0.0833 K3 is equal to point <coughs> 0.4 3, 3, 6, K2 equal to 0 0.7456, K1 equal to minus 0 0.8444. In addition, you require the values of alpha 1, <coughs> excuse me, alpha 1 is 0 alpha 2 is 0 0.5, alpha 3 is 1.8986 and alpha 4 is 3.6060. You require an alpha 5 also and that comes as 4.8460. This is routine. The only thing I wanted to point out is that you must not do this mistake. You must not truncate. <coughs> if it is a recurring number, you keep it as a fraction. The next one, 630. It says develop a 2 multiplier canonic realization. It is of similar form as the first one that we did. 2 multiplier canonic realization required <coughs> for 2 transfer functions A H 1 of Z equal to 1 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 2 1 plus Z inverse whole squared divided by 1 minus alpha 1 z inverse plus alpha 2 z to the minus 2. If I write <coughs> the difference equation, I could work in terms of z inverse or I can write the difference equation. If I write the difference equation for a change, then I get y of n as equal to 1 okay x n plus twice x n minus 1 corresponding to 1 plus z inverse whole squared plus x of n minus 2 and this will be occurring every time therefore I will call this some function let us say a of n then plus alpha 1 y n y n minus 1 that is right because of z inverse minus a n agreed you see how simplified things have become plus alpha 2 not plus minus this quantity going to the right hand side minus alpha 2 y of n minus 2 once again minus or plus minus a n minus a n because plus alpha 2 <coughs> minus and minus will make it plus all that now you have to construct is xn plus 2xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2. This is an FIR. You construct this, call this a n. Then you assume at the output end there is a y n delayed by one sample, two samples. Take the outputs and add it to a n minus a n. And therefore, you make only one sign change, one multiplication by minus 1 and then do the rest. 
Running more uh, multiplier. We will not be able. We will not be able to. We can submit two times. Two is not a multiplier. Two is a shift. And therefore, three. Pardon me. Three is two plus one. <laughs> Obviously, in parallel, parallel. No, no. How about one third? How about one third or pi? You cannot construct any multiplier as summation of powers of two. Anyway, <coughs> what I want to do now, what I want to do now. Once you have constructed this, it is okay, but there was also a requirement of canonic, is not that right? You see to construct A of n, you require x of n, then z inverse, z inverse, this is the point for which I took this example and you have <coughs> summation this is multiplied by 2, 2 is not a summation as I said, 2 is not a multiplication and this is, <coughs> this goes here, this is my A of n. I also require for once I construct Y of n, I also require 2 delays. Okay. I also require two delays to construct y n minus 1 and y n minus 2. Now the in between structure you can draw. There is no reason why because it is a cascade. Please follow this point carefully. I physically lift it up and put it on the right hand side. Then these two delays can be shared and therefore you get a canonic realization. You have to be <coughs> you have to be a little um, careful in doing this. Okay, The delays can be shared. You do not require four delays, you can do it too. I will not uh, continue this. You, if you have understood, you can do it yourself. <coughs> the next one, B part. B says H of Z equal to y z by x of z equals to 1 minus alpha 2, 1 minus z to the minus 2 divided by 1 minus alpha 1 z inverse plus alpha 2 z to the minus 2. And the difference equation here is to write it carefully y n equal to not x n first. Well, alpha 1 y of n minus 1, agreed? Okay, x n will come, but do I want x n? No, I do not want x n. I will tell you why. I want only two multipliers, I do not want more than that. So, what I do is alpha 1 y n minus 1, then minus alpha 2 y of n minus 2, then plus x n minus x n minus 2, I will call this w of n. Okay. W of n is x n minus x n minus 2. Is the point clear? Then plus w n, that is right. So, what I construct is first x n minus x n minus 2, I require 2 delays x n z inverse z inverse and <coughs> a single delay here. This is w n and then I make appropriate combinations. I have y of n, I require two delays in order to convert, in order to find y n minus 1 and y n minus 2.
and appropriate summations with W n and then apply the same trick. In other words, I physically lift this and take it to the right because it is a cascade. Is this point clear to all of you? Once you draw it, it will be obvious that because it is a cascade, I can break it here. I physically lift this, bring it here and then share the two delays because they come in parallel. Okay? So, this problem should also be clear to you. The next one, <coughs> 648, I will do this rather tricky problem and then we will switch over to a, a relatively simple one and then conclude with that. Okay. 648 says develop a realization of a first order complex coefficient transfer function. It has always been uh, <coughs> at the back of your mind why real coefficient? Why can't we do with complex coefficient? Yes, you can do it complex coefficient. There is no hardware for realizing square root of minus 1. There is no hardware. So, what you do is you find the real part, you find the imaginary part separately. This is a problem regarding that and I particularly chose this because one of the students asked me and because I wanted to illustrate to you that complex coefficient is nothing to be scared of. It can be done, but you require more hardware, double the hardware because you will have to process the real part and imaginary part separately. There is no way you can combine them by multiplying by j. There is no j. There is no hardware which realizes j. There is no software which realizes j either. Okay? j is a concept square root of minus 1. So, what you do is once you obtain the signal, obviously the signal will also be a complex signal. This happens in FFT, complex uh, variable. You store the real part in one storage and the imaginary part in another storage and whenever required, you will require either the magnitude or the phase or both. So, you shall have to have a software to calculate real part squared plus imaginary part squared and square root of that and the other is tangent inverse of imaginary part divided by real part <coughs> and then utilize the result. This is a problem regarding this. It says develop a realization of a first order complex coefficient transfer function h of z equal to a plus j b divided by 1 plus alpha I beg your pardon alpha plus j beta z inverse. I am not very uh, good at uh, distinguish between B, capital B and beta. So, I will replace this by C. It does not change any of the. So, that we can avoid a confusion. B and beta whenever they occur together there is a confusion one might make a mistake. So, what we do is we write this as y z by x z equals to a plus j c, let me write this again, 1 plus alpha plus j beta z inverse. So, y n is equal to a plus j c x n <coughs> minus alpha plus j beta y of n minus 1. <coughs> We of course assume that x of n is real. Your input is a real sequence. It could also be complex. <coughs> if we do that, because it is a complex coefficient first order function, y, y of n shall consist of a real part and an imaginary part y j. <coughs> so, write this equation in terms of y r and y j. Then you get two equations obviously, y real part of n as equal to minus well a x of n that is right a x of n minus alpha y real part of n minus 1. Now you have to be careful 
the imaginary part shall also come in what form plus or minus minus plus plus beta y j of n minus 1 do not miss this okay because you are multiplying a complex quantity by another complex quantity the real part shall consist of two terms and the second one is y j n would be equal to c times x of n the imaginary part minus beta y real part of n minus 1 minus alpha y imaginary part of n minus 1. So, these are the two equations that you have to realize by <coughs> a realization diagram and the diagram is to be drawn carefully. <coughs> the trick is start with x of n and suppose there are two outputs y r of n and y j of n all right you require you require y r of n minus 1 therefore have a z inverse all right you require <coughs> y j of n minus 1 therefore have a z inverse okay now it is a matter of combination. So, what you do is <coughs> x of n you multiply by a add it to <coughs> minus alpha <coughs> y r of n minus 1 and uh, this should be minus alpha you have to add it one more summary is required ok minus alpha y r of n minus 1 then you require another summer and that is beta plus beta y j of n minus 1. So, here ok beta <coughs> that is right. Similarly, now you can construct y j of n <coughs> as c times x n. So, you have a parallel path multiply by c then you require two summers the output shall be equal to y j of n and this summers shall receive inputs minus beta y r n minus 1. So, from here the figure is becoming complicated. Let me use another color. From here, <coughs> I will point out something else after I draw the diagram. Okay, minus beta y r of n minus 1 and to this shall be added minus alpha I have not tried I must complete the diagram where is it this must be completed. Now, you notice two things <coughs> that minus alpha occurs twice and beta and minus beta minus beta is nothing but sign change beta. It should be possible I have not exerted further but you should try whether these two can be combined into one multiplier. Sir, if we separate as z into real part and imaginary part. At if we separate? As z into real part and imaginary part at the initial state. Well, at the initial part. state then you will require more hardware. H r g z plus j times h j z you will require more hardware. You will not get it in this form. In this form it should be possible to combine these two and probably you may have to change the multipliers from beta to some other quantity probably it is only a suggestion <coughs> you try it out. Also you notice that <coughs> this the multiplication from here 
is minus alpha and minus beta. So why change sine twice? You could have a minus 1 here and then multiply by alpha and beta. If you do that, then these two multipliers become the same. But these two become different, minus alpha and minus alpha, right? So you have to make these, these adjustments, judgments and see which one gives the best. It is also another part. It says, <coughs> show the real and imaginary parts of all signal variables separately, then determine the transfer functions from Xn to Y R of n and Y J of n. You are required to determine the transfer functions from this point to this point and to this point. Now, how would you like to do it? Analyze this and obtain this? From the difference. From the difference. That is the clue. Do not try analyzing this. You will make your life miserable. What you do is take the difference equation, take their Z transform and evaluate Y R of Z and Y J of Z. Okay? The point is taken. The last problem of today. An important problem because of our <coughs> obsession with all pass filters. There is nothing, almost nothing that cannot be done with all pass filters. Mitra will tell you more. But this is, this is a problem in all pass filter. Realize the following transfer functions in the form of parallel connection of all pass filters. Parallel connection of all pass filters. I had given such a problem in minor 2 and most of you tried half 1 plus a second order. That is not necessary. <coughs> the poles will determine what kind of decomposition is possible. It is, I am not saying that if poles are complex, you could even decompose into 1 plus a second order. If poles are real, even then you could do that. But the simplest thing to do would be to decompose them into first order transfer function. Suppose you are given a second order transfer function, second order IIR. Then if both decompositions are possible, <coughs> second order IIR having real poles. Let me give this preamble, then I will give the result. <coughs> then you can either decompose them into two first order all passes or one constant and a second order all pass. You should prefer which one? Two first order because it, it, it is faster. Only one delay is required in both the parallel sections. This must be remembered. And given real poles, it may not be possible to decompose into two first order ones. It is not always possible. And also you should try for general coefficient, general constant. That is instead of you see half a 0 z plus minus a 1 z, these are special cases, special cases. It may not be possible. You might have to do k 1 a 0 z plus k 2 a 1 c. Okay? This you must remember. And uh, both a 0 and a 1 you can construct very simply by looking at the denominator. The coefficients get interchanged. Let us look at these this functions. First, h 1 z equal to 2 plus 2 z inverse divided by 3 plus z inverse. Do not try half 1 plus something. Okay? You decompose this as k1. Obviously, if it is to be a sum of two all pass functions, then you must have 3 plus z inverse divided by 1, 3 z inverse. Is this possible or not? Well, it should always be possible because you have two unknowns 
and two coefficient, two equations and therefore this should always be possible. The result here happens to be half 1 plus 3 plus c inverse but this is not guaranteed to occur okay. H2z b H2z is 1 minus z inverse divided by 4 plus 4 plus 2z inverse. Uh, whenever such a thing occurs that there, there is a multiplying constant take it out because otherwise unnecessarily numbers become large. So write this as half <coughs> 2 plus z inverse divided by 1 minus z inverse. Then you write this as half k1 plus k2 2 plus z inverse 1 plus 2 z inverse and find out k1 and k2 k1 comes out as 1 and k2 comes out as minus 1. <coughs> H3z is equal to 1 minus z to the minus 2 divided by 4 plus 2z inverse plus 2z to the minus 2. Here is a function in which it may be possible to decompose into two first order. But if you find the poles of this, you find that they are complex and therefore it has to be k1. Again you take this half out. So you write half k1 plus k2, you two, two first order, k2 2 plus z inverse plus z to the minus 2, then 1 plus z inverse plus 2 z to the minus 2 and find k1 and k2, k1 is 1 and k2 is minus 1, that is my result. I hope I am right. The next problem d h4 of z is equal to 3 plus 9z inverse plus 9z to the minus 2 plus 3z to the minus 3, 12 plus 10z inverse plus 2z to the minus 2. So once again you take half out and write the denominator as 6 plus 5z inverse plus z to the minus 2 which also makes it obvious that this can be written as 3 plus, 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 inverse. plus z inverse into 2 plus z inverse. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So you write H4z as half K1 3 plus z inverse 1 plus 3z inverse plus K2 2 plus z inverse <laughs> okay that is the problem that is the problem what do we do first we have to k3 z inverse will not be two all passes it will be three three all passes pardon me add a delay in one of them okay k1 z inverse plus k2 Can we add delays in both? But the, the, only the coefficients k1 and k2 will differ. Okay. Then we will not get z, z inverse. Not only that, it also increases the hardware. Now I have found out that it works only for z inverse in one of them. So you will have to do one trial. If it works, it works. The other one is not possible. And what I have found out is that this z inverse should be with k1. If that is so then k1 and k2 comes as 1. On the other hand if we if we introduce z inverse here it does not work. Either I am 
wrong or it does not work. Okay? You find out. Now that is an interesting question. If I add a z inverse to both, does it work? Even if it works, we will not prefer that. So we will not get the constant terms right? That is correct. So we cannot no. add a z inverse to both. We have a constant 3 to take care of. So okay. Then inverted power is z is to minus 4 up to z is to minus 4. Then what should we do? <laughs> we put a z to the minus 2 in one of them. <laughs> it might work with both. It may not work with one of them. So you shall have to find out. Yeah, the constant term. You cannot apply to both of them if there is a constant term. <coughs> so, will the answer be unique? Will it, will it have only one answer? How do you know? You have not, you have not explored the possibility of keeping it a second order in the denominator. It could be a constant plus this. No. No. Constant plus this all plus. No, <laughs> it cannot be. It cannot be k1 plus k2 multiplied by an all pass like this, because then z to the minus 3 is not obtained. So it is either k1 z inverse plus this, or k1 plus k2 z inverse multiplied by an all pass. So there are. Why not? I can have k1 z inverse plus k2 6 plus 5z inverse plus z to the minus 2 1 plus 5z inverse plus 6z to the minus 2. <coughs> this will also give it a, a, a z to the minus 3 in the numerator. So this is also a possibility. Okay? So there are, there are many ways that it can be done. Some will work, some will not work. For example, in the other one making k2z inverse in my calculation it did not come. It was not satisfied and therefore I had to go back to K1. Okay? I think we can call it a day.